And we got off the call and I called my friend Carlos and said, yeah, Trump lost. That's it. Pennsylvania's a no-go. And if this is how his campaign's being ran outside Pennsylvania, it's over. Rob, what do I think about Trump not campaigning in key battleground states? I'm not liking him campaigning in North Carolina instead of Nevada or Pennsylvania. Yeah, I don't think his campaign's doing very well at all. Who, who hires these people? How am I not a campaign manager? I'd fucking kill it. Who ran DeSantis' campaign? Sucked. People running Trump's campaign sucks. I'll tell you a story. This is a real story. In the 2020 election, I was doing all these events. Now, I wasn't going to a lot of rallies, like the rally that Trump got shot at in Butler. I didn't go to a lot of those. Instead, what I was going to was sort of like fundraiser things for Republicans, strategy meetings for Republicans that would be at private people's residence. So perhaps a state congressman or a donor to the Republican Party, etc. And uh, I was going to a lot of events like that. I was also working with Trump's ground team in Pennsylvania to help in my county here of Clarion County. So I went to this, I've told this story before. I went to this uh, fundraiser out east in Pennsylvania with my old radio co-host, Carlos, a great guy. And uh, we show up to this thing. It's this beautiful house. And the speaker that they had there was Jeffrey Lord who used to like go on CNN all the time and sort of defend Trump back in the day. Um, so it was cool to hear him speak and I got to talk to him for a while. Anywho, um, I'm kind of a bit of an outsider at events like that. Not that anyone's ever rude to me. I, I didn't have any rudeness, uh, but I don't have connections. I'm not like someone that they're courting for my money or anything like that. Like, me and Carlos are usually the dudes that at the end of it are sitting there talking with the actual politicians about, like, strategy. So we go in this place, and, hey, how you doing? I meet a couple people, whatever, and then I sit in this couch, and there's this older lady sitting on the couch across from me. She looks maybe 70. We just start chit-chatting. And she tells me her story. And it went something like this. I believe she lived in Nevada, and she was married... And sadly, her husband passed, and she kind of didn't know what to do with her life. And so, for whatever reason, she moved back towards Pennsylvania. I don't know if she had family, I can't remember. But she comes back to Pennsylvania, and, you know, as you would be at that point, your, your long-term spouse dies, you're probably a little depressed, you're probably looking for some, you know, people to be connected to, because you feel lonely. And she, I think, got a small job, and met some ladies that she was friends with at her job, and they convinced her to go to this Trump rally. She's like, I haven't been involved in politics my entire life. She didn't go to this rally because she's a big Trump fan. She went because her friends went. So she was going along as just like a something to do. And she went and was amazed by the speech and then was sort of hanging out backstage and she got to shake Trump's hand and he talked to her for like two or three minutes. And that changed her entire perspective. Now you might say, well, but is, that's just like letting emotions get the best of you. Yeah, true. But she was a diehard Trump supporter from that moment on. And you could just see her enthusiasm. It was amazing. And she'd been doing all these canvassing and putting up yard signs and knocking on doors and making phone calls, more than I was doing by far. And it was inspiring to listen to this lady. I thought she was cool as shit. I could listen to her all day talk about it. So anyways, 30, 40 minutes later, there was people from Trump's team that were there and they were giving an official presentation. And these were people that were hired. They were part of Trump's paid staff. And it was two guys. The one guy, I don't even remember. The guy that was speaking... Maybe was 23 years old, which is fine, but they had a screen and a projector and they had a PowerPoint. And the PowerPoint consisted of four or five slides and it showed sort of how polling was going, fundraising graphs, etc. That was it. This was how the guy talked. Okay, thanks everyone for being here today. Uh, so here we're going to go through this quick. 
Uh, I think everyone's done a tremendous job here. We're doing a pretty good job in this county. Uh, so if you look at the first slide here, you can see um, we've been doing pretty good with our numbers here. We're, we're, we're thinking that if we can continue that. It was like that. It was like 10 minutes. Now, I don't know shit about technology. I can put together a fucking better PowerPoint than this. And there's just no enthusiasm. None. And I like, it took everything I had to be like, hey man, sit down and let this lady speak. How about that? Why don't you leave her have a chance in the mic if you want to get people fired up to win? That's the caliber of people that are like running campaigns and shit. Look at Rona McDaniel running the RNC for years. What the fuck? Could you find a less competent person? In fact, so bad that you have to wonder, and I do truly believe this, that it was self-sabotage. That the RNC wanted Republicans to lose so that they could hang it on Trump and say, can we get rid of this fucking guy? I've told this story when I first got offered the job by Trump's team. It's just real small to work in the county. I was already volunteering. So I mean, Carlos again sat on this phone call with the two employees from, you know, that would be our direct liaison. So, you know, it's like anything, like any sort of corporate structure. I would have been the low man on the totem pole. And then there's a guy that's in charge of like four counties that would be above me. Then there's a guy that's in charge of the region that was in charge of him. And then the state level guy that was in charge. And then probably a guy above him that was coordinating for like Eastern United States. It was, you know what I mean? So I was, I would have been the lowest person basically. So we're talking to the people directly above it. And they're saying, oh, you know, here's the program you put in your computer to make these calls. And the calls were absurd. I made hundreds upon hundreds of these calls. And it was just like, you didn't even convince anyone of anything. You just said, you got their names off some voter registration list. Voting day is blah, blah, blah. May I ask you a few questions? Who are you going to vote for? Uh, would you say your biggest issue is the economy, the border, or something else? And that's it. You just, and then you click the box on these, and then thank you very much. You weren't supposed to say anything off the cuff. You weren't supposed to try to convince them to vote for Trump or anything like that. It was just so they could use for their internal polling. So they're going over their strategy on this phone call with the, like, you know, the three or four people that they were considering hiring like me. Any questions, they said. I said, I have a question. What are we doing to reach out to communities that traditionally don't vote Republican? He says, like who? And I was like, for example, I live in a college town, so younger people or single mothers or inner city blacks. What are we doing to reach out to those crews? And I shit you not, the paid member of Trump's team told me, we're not concerned with that. We're just going after low-hanging fruit. And we got off the call and I called my friend Carlos and said, yeah, Trump lost. That's it. Pennsylvania's a no-go. And if this is how his campaign's being ran outside Pennsylvania, it's over. They fight tooth and nail. Someone who's actually moving the needle in a successful way, like Scott Pressler, like they don't want anything to do with him. Why? He's actually pounding the pavement, making a difference. Meanwhile, the Democrats, you'd say what you want. Oh, do you see how shady it is? Kamala's team's like reaching out to influencers and entertainers and shit. Okay. You might think it's unethical, but it's legal. What? And what's Trump's team doing? Aiden Ross was, I'm not a big Aiden Ross fan, but that was smart. Trying to reach out to a different group. I take over Trump's campaign day one. This is what I'm doing. I'm immediately making a phone call to Scott Pressler, to Ron DeSantis, to Vivek. And I'm telling them, okay, Scott, you are, our, you are officially in charge of our ground game in every swing state. DeSantis, you are our media liaison. You're going to go out every day that you're able to. I know you're still governor. And you're going to make the pitch. Trump, you're going to come out publicly and say something to this effect. Listen, I know I was hard on DeSantis. And I know I said some stuff in the heat of the moment that sort of wasn't maybe the smartest thing to say. I think Ron DeSantis is clearly the best governor in the country. I think that he has a tremendous ability to lead our party into the near future. 
Thanks, Chad Smith, for the two bucks. Says, always said the Dems play the game better. Yeah, totally true.